videos of Gen Z continue to go viral for complaining about work. But do they have a point? We're going to talk about that here today and more on Speechless. Hey, 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 everybody, and welcome back to Speechless. I'm your host, Kev Ferris, 23-year-old conservative college graduate now host of Speechless on Cities 92.9 and other radio stations, but I don't necessarily fit everything onto those content platforms, so I bring it to you here on YouTube and such. So don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, comment what you think, share it with your friends, and if you notice that maybe my camera quality isn't as good as usual, my usual camera did break as I was recording this, so if you want to support this show, I got my Venmo and Cash app down there. I want to get a new camera, and I'd really appreciate any help with that, but let's get on into it. Gener Generation Z my generation, and millennials are complaining about their traditional 9-to-5 jobs. It's something I've been talking about on this show for quite a while, and I'll continue to talk about it because I think it's relatively important. And So, um, out of Fox Business, videos of Gen Zers and millennials complaining about the traditional 9-to-5 job have spread, spread across the social media platforms like wildfire and sparked debates about the younger generation's work ethic or lack thereof, as some would say. Some employers are even avoiding hiring Gen Zers, according to one recent survey, with 58% believing these workers are unprepared for the workforce. Some experts argue Gen Zers aren't lazy for griping about their corporate job structure. It just means they have radically different priorities than generations before them. One says Gen Z is not a lazy generation. But it is an entitled generation because they have the freedom to make a more broad set of decisions than older generations that have financial ob obligations. They're different, labor force expert John Freshy told Fox News Digital. Freshy, the senior managing director and head of global labor strategy for the consulting firm An Ankura, explained how data shows younger adults aren't getting married and having kids at the rates previous generations did. Over half of younger adults are living at home with their parents, while less than half say they're a member of an organized religion, he said. And that's really where I think the biggest issue is comes to everybody, is the lack of organized religion. Look, people are not organizing their lives in quite the same way anymore, and they find themselves to be basically adult children that have very poor money managing skills, and focus on things like I've covered in other videos, like NATO dating, not attached to an outcome, I don't, let's just see how it goes, or, or dink, dual income, uh, no kids. Those people don't seem to be complaining about the nine to five. But even this argument from Freshy doesn't totally make sense because he claims that, oh, well, they're not lazy, they just have different priorities, and income isn't one of them. That's essentially what he's saying. Their financial obligations are different. They don't have kids to worry about. Well, that's the thing, though, is so this one, she goes by cap. Um, her complaint has to do with the amount that she makes. So take a look and a listen to this, uh, this example of a Gen Zer complaining about work. I'd also like to point out, before we even start, it would seem as though Kat works at Walmart. Just before everything else that you that you that you look or listen at when it comes to this one, it seems though as though Cat works at Walmart. Let's take a look. I cannot stand how the news has been dogging Gen Z and calling them lazy for not wanting to work a nine to five for the rest of their lives. Let me put it in perspective for everybody who's a little confused here. Okay, I work five days out of the week, okay. forty hours a week. Okay, I do not make enough to live on my own. I would not make enough to pay rent, water, electric, and eat. All by myself. I would not be capable of doing that. 20 years ago when you were getting started, you could live on your own. Okay, she's obviously not talking to me because I'm still in Generation Z and also entering the workforce similarly. Um, however, you work at Walmart, Kat. I can tell by your vest. The, the problem is with, the, with a lot of the generations, they look at, at the amount of output they're doing and not necessarily the value it's creating. And they believe that simply because they are doing some level of work, that they deserve a certain level of pay. And look, I don't know all of her expenses. I don't know how she handles her money. I can't necessarily rebut anything like that. But what I can say is, by and large, when it comes to this kinds of thing, when this this kind of thing, I don't even know what job she does at Walmart. But she's got a, a stocker vest on. She's probably restocked shelves or or gets the carts or something. Who knows? But what I can say is that. 
does that value created by the job you're doing create enough to where you should be compensated whatever the amount you're asking for is? That's really the question because that's the point is does the job you're doing create the certain level of value to which your salary is reflected? And that would be one of my biggest questions. Do you deserve to have your entire life paid for? Is the, is the job you're currently doing meant to provide for everything? They continuously look at their output put and not necessarily the input into the larger system. And I think that's the issue, but let's keep listening. 20 years ago, when you first started, you were able to do everything that I am now struggling to do. We had another perspective here. You I don't believe that. I don't believe a bagger at Walmart was able to pay for all of their expenses on a 40 hour work week as being a bagger from Walmart. And it also depends on where you live too, but let's keep listening. You've been working for 20 years. You have 20 years of working experience behind your belt. You have 20 years of experience in a career that has allowed you to gain raises, to get more money, to profit you in an economy that you created. You can sit here and you can call Gen Z lazy all you want, but I've been working my tail end off just to barely make it by. And respectfully, I don't want to do that for the rest of my life. I don't want to work my tail end off, wasting all of my life working just to barely be able to pay my bills. Okay, if you feel like you're wasting your life with the job you're currently doing, I would recommend you look for a new job. That I mean, Kat, come on. She looked very angry too, especially at the point I paused it, but... Uh, and obviously you're angry. I'd be angry too. Look, she's the, she's got a point. There's a cliche phrase out there. Everybody hears it. It's, if you're doing a job you love, you never have to work a day in your life. You never have to work a day in your life. Why don't you do that job? Find that one. Find that one. Because obviously being a bagger at Walmart isn't good enough for you, cat. This girl in this TikTok. And so she continuously and continuously complains about all this. Uh, again. You don't have to. You also, at some point, you can work and also get the raises and and promote yourself if you do jobs that allow for that. That's why a lot of people in Gen Z are, well, not, not Gen Z. A lot of people, when they enter the workforce, smart people, ask, ask questions in job interviews about upward mobility. Ask that question. But I can tell you, being a bagger at Walmart, Managing that Walmart is likely the highest, is, is the, the most reasonable level of upward mobility you currently have. So, just saying. And that is what you created, not Gen Z. We're just here getting started. You've been doing it for the last 20 years. You tell me how it got ruined. We can sit here and we can call Gen Z lazy all you want, but you let the economy turn into what it did. You let it all run to hell. And now it's Gen Z's fault because we don't want to work to fix your mistakes. It's always everybody else's fault. That's the way that a lot of this generation works. Uh, it's always going to be somebody else's fault. And I think it's, I mean, it's kind of unfair. To an extent, I understand what she's saying. I won't actually necessarily disagree with all of it. Um, if you're unhappy in a job that you're currently in, you shouldn't do that job anymore. I guarantee you your service probably isn't very good if you're not motivated to do it. And you're also miserable. And making yourself more miserable. So don't do it. Don't work that 9 to 5. But don't complain about the pay. Because you also accepted that pay. On the day that you signed the contract and said, hey, I will work for you. And I will do this job. I will do it for this pay. And if you're not getting raises, advocate for yourself. Go into the boss's office. But I think, honestly, my biggest problem with all of this is you're posting it to social media as if you are... Is it as if that's the person you're venting to? No. Go and have a reasonable conversation with your boss. Don't necessarily air out all your dirty laundry online. Uh, but continue with that article. Gen Z also wants their job to accommodate their lifestyle rather than the other way around. This leads to younger generations being more likely to work in the gig economy or change jobs frequently rather than stay in a work environment they don't like. Research shows Gen Zers are less likely to seek promotions because they don't want to work overtime and have extra responsibilities that could impinge on their lifestyle. These different motivations are fundamentally misunderstood by some older employees, he said. So that's the thing, too, is the market will change when the market demands new. 
right now he this this article isn't wrong the the motivations are misunderstood by some older employers they are however if that's what the older employers are demanding right now and they can find people to fill those roles then they will but if there are people such as these tiktokers that are going to complain about it they won't get hired what I'm really getting to the root of is, is Gen Z genuinely lazy, as a lot of the media would, would portray? I've done, I know a lot of people that are not the way of these TikTokers. However, there's a lot of people on social media that complain about their job. And so the question I'm asking is, is it representative of the entire generation? Or is it simply, simply the loudest voices, those that are posting about it, those that are complaining? while maybe the majority of the generation keeps their head down and does their job. What I can tell you, though, is employers are going to be much more frustrated with Gen Z as they take to this social media age. As we look at other examples, not only do they take their frustrations out on social media as a coping mechanism after working that said job, they also do it as a coping mechanism when they're getting fired. Here's another story for you out of the New York Post. Um, Brittany Peach who I'm gonna introduce you to, uh, she is 27 and has worked as an account executive at Cloudflare, Cloudfare, until she was laid off on January 9th. And she told the Wall Street Journal on Wednesday of last week, I don't regret sharing that. What is that? It's actually a TikTok that she took while she was being fired. I'm not even kidding you. This young woman took a TikTok of herself while she was being fired, and it's over nine minutes long. And so let's take a look and a listen. This is Brittany. We're only going to listen to about two minutes of it, and I'll probably pause in between. But this is Brittany Peach as she is getting fired and exactly what she had to say and how her employer approached her while she was getting fired. This is just absolutely fascinating to me. Take a look and a listen. Yeah, I'm going to stop you right there. Also, why are you doing this and not my manager? Not, you know, we've never met, so this seems a little odd that... My manager has no idea that this has been happening and the director has no idea that this has been happening. So I'm just definitely confused and um, yeah, I would love like an explanation that makes sense. Also, um, okay, she would love an explanation that makes sense. I'm sure a lot of people would when they're getting fired. Uh, but that's not always how it works. Because to you, and, and from what I understand, I don't know if she goes further into it in this clip, but she gets told that it was performance related, and that's why she was getting fired. And currently, when it comes to the standards set on employees and the, and the often litigious nature of ex-employees, they are very, very, very careful with the word choice that they use. And so, Brittany, that is the nature of getting fired. It's also just business. It's not always personal. Maybe it is. Maybe the real reason is because nobody likes to work with you and you're an absolutely annoying person, uh, but they're going to tell you it's performance related because they can't come out and tell you that you're non-collaborative and no one likes you. I'll say it because I'm willing to bet you are. If this is how you, how you operate, a private moment in which you are being fired is not a time in which to take out a camera and start recording. The other thing when it comes to this is if you have a problem with what they're saying in terms of, of them firing you, you're not helping your case or anybody else by filming it. When you film it like this, here's what's going to happen. Now employers are going to be even more vague with their explanations to people about when they fire them. Because they know that there's a chance I could, get, I could be filmed right now and I really need to watch what I say and give myself as much plausible deniability in a court of law. That's the first thing. The second thing, Brittany, is you are also committing career suicide because no one's going to hire you knowing that if the time were to come where they'd be firing you, they will likely get filmed for it or they would have a potential for it. So, Brittany, you're just not very smart, but let's keep listening to see what else this employer has to say. Um, every single one-on-one -on -one I've had with my manager, every conversation I've had with him, has he has been giving me nothing but I am doing a great job, I have had great activity, I have really great meetings. So... I disagree that my performance hasn't been, um, I haven't met performance expectations and it must be 
very easy for you to just have these little 10-minute, 15-minute meetings, tell someone that they're fired, completely wreck their whole life, and then that's it with no explanation. Okay, your whole life is not wrecked. That's a little bit of, a, of an overstatement there. Along with that, you're getting fired right now. They're saying it's a done deal. They didn't call you into this meeting to say, hey, let's have a conversation. We're considering ending your employment. No, you're getting fired. They don't really get, they don't care. They couldn't give less of a crap about your argument as to why you believe that you've met performance expectations. But okay. It just doesn't make it, it just doesn't make any sense that you guys have still not been able to give me a reason why I'm being let go. They gave you a reason. It was performance. You were not meeting performance expectations. What, do you want them to lay out every second of your workday and tell you why you're not meeting them? Do better. Just for, from a process perspective, your questions are valid. This isn't going to be the forum and the situation where we're able to go into the detail that you're but looking then, for. But then when? If it's not right as I'm getting fired, then it's certainly not going to be after when I'm no longer part of the company. Well, I don't think that there's anything we can say in this moment or today, Brittany, that's going to change the way that you feel. And it's under, again, like understandable. I'm taking notes and feedback and we'll circle back. Yeah, I know. You did that for me too, the but that's... The meeting. Um, it's not going to change the outcome of the situation today, so it may be best if we, I do get into more of the specifics of what the next steps are. Um, because I think it's clear that you have questions that we can... And so here, uh, they're finishing it up, but this is also what the, uh, what the, I believe the CEO of Cloudfare uh, put out in terms of all this, basically saying, we fired about 40 salespeople out of our over 1,500 in our go-to-market uh, org. That's a normal quarter. When we're doing performance management right, we can often tell within three months or less of a sales hire, even during the holidays, whether they're going to be successful or not. Sadly, we don't hire perfectly. We try to fire perfectly. In this case, clearly, we're not, we were far from perfect. He, had begin, he continues to respond to this video with class saying, there were some issues here. The manager should have been involved, essentially. Um, and sometimes underperforming employees don't actually listen to the feedback they've gotten before we let them go. Importantly, just because we fire someone doesn't mean they're a bad employee. It doesn't mean they won't be really, uh, really, really great somewhere else. Chris Paul was a bad fit for the Suns, but he's undoubtedly a great basketball player, period. And in fact, we think that the right thing to do is get people is get people we know are unlikely to succeed off the team as quickly as possible so they can find a right place for them. This is a perfect, perfect response to this whole thing. That CEO was definitely trained on PR because this could have been not great for them, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to go against uh, the CEO or anything or the company. And I will, if I ever believe that a company is doing the bad, doing a bad thing. Uh, but no, there is no reason why she should have filmed that interaction. She should have accepted the consequences. But the CEO came back and honestly ended it. There is no more need for anything like this. Brittany's not very smart. The Walmart one that I started in the beginning was not very smart. But I want to remind everybody out there, while things like this go viral, they go viral because they're unique. Not every Gen Z member is a lazy sack of crap like the media would have them portrayed. I'll agree with the first one on that. But posting more and more and more complaining about your job and making it a public spectacle to do so not only reflects poorly on the generation, more importantly, it reflects poorly on you. Because then any employer is going to be out there saying, maybe I shouldn't even hire that person because this is something that they're going to go do. They're going to mischaracterize their job and their performance to make them seem like the hero, the employer feel like the villain, and then it just creates bad PR. And that's what both of these clips really did. That's what they both did. Why can't we all just get along? That's my question for today. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Please do. And when you subscribe, share it with your friends as well. Comment what you think. Uh, and please, please, please have a wonderful rest of your day. God bless you guys. God bless America. Until next time, you've been listening to Speechless.